travel documents issued by a sovereign state. Should native Taiwanese people who want to travel internationally be able to apply for travel documents issued by a sovereign state? Discussion and analysis. Secretary Powell's statement. Our policy is clear. There is only one China. Taiwan is not independent. It does not enjoy sovereignty as a nation, and that remains our policy, our firm policy. Director Wilder's statement. Taiwan or the Republic of China is not at this point a state in the international community. The position of the United States government is that the ROC, Republic of China, is an issue undecided, and it has been left undecided, as you know, for many, many years. Roger C.S. Lin et al. versus United States of America, March 18, 2008, District Court Decision. The native Taiwanese plaintiffs have essentially been persons without a state for almost 60 years. The last completely clear statement of authority over Taiwan came from General MacArthur in 1945. One can understand and sympathize with plaintiffs' desire to regularize their position in the world. April 7, 2009, Court of Appeals Decision America and China's tumultuous relationship over the past 60 years has trapped the inhabitants of Taiwan in political purgatory. During this time, the people on Taiwan have lived without any uniformly recognized government. In practical terms, this means they have uncertain status in the world community, which infects the population's day-to-day -day lives. This pervasive ambiguity has driven appellants to try to concretely define their national identity and personal rights. According to the above data, the United States Executive Branch and U.S. courts do not recognize the Republic of China on Taiwan as a sovereign state. So, what is the ROC on Taiwan? Based on the legal and historical record, Taiwan was a Japanese national territory until Japan renounced all of its rights, claims, and title in the San Francisco Peace Treaty of 1952. Hence, it seems reasonable to say that when the ROC moved its central government to occupy Taiwan in early December 1949, it was moving outside of China's national territory and immediately became a government in exile. Reference may be made to the case of Shung v. Rogers, D.C. Circuit, October 6, 1959, where the judges examined the legal status of Taiwan in detail and held that the government of the Republic of China exercises authority over the island, that the sovereignty of Formosa has not been transferred to China, and that Formosa is not a part of China as a country, at least not as yet, and not until and unless appropriate treaties are hereafter entered into. Formosa may be said to be a territory or an area occupied and administered by the government of the Republic of China, but is not officially recognized as being a part of the Republic of China. Based on the above, it is clear that there was no Taiwan Retrocession Day on October 25, 1945. The ROC has never held the territorial sovereignty of Taiwan, and the issuance of ROC passports to native Taiwanese persons is without legal basis. Definition Native Taiwanese People Upon the signing of the surrender documents by the Japanese Emperor on September 2, 1945, all people of Taiwan bearing household registration in Japanese-governed Taiwan and their descendants continuing to possess household registration in Taiwan up to the present. Importantly, the human rights of the native Taiwanese people are being violated and have been violated since the end of World War II. They are native Taiwanese people, not Chinese citizens. As such, they should not be forced to carry ROC passports. Passports and Nationality The Republic of China passport carried by native Taiwanese people clearly indicates the bearer's nationality as Republic of China. Under international standards, however, such a nationality designation does not exist. This is explained as follows. ISO 3166-1 Alpha 3 codes are three-letter country codes defined in ISO 3166-1, part of the ISO 3166 standard published by the International Organization for Standardization to represent countries, territories, etc. These three-letter abbreviations have been formally adopted by the International Civil Aviation Organization as the official designations of a recognized nationality, 
for use in manufacturing machine-readable passports carried by travelers in order to deal with entry and exit procedures at customs authorities in all nations and territories of the world. According to these three-letter ISO country codes adopted by ICAO, the Republic of China is not a recognized nationality in the international community, and thus there is no ROC entry. This is a serious human rights issue for native Taiwanese people, because Article 15 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says everyone has the right to a nationality. What is the solution to this problem? At the minimum, the native Taiwanese people should be entitled to hold travel documents issued by a sovereign state. The question then arises, which sovereign state should take the responsibility for issuing travel documents to native Taiwanese people? The following excerpts from the Foreign Relations of the United States series edited by the Department of State offer some important insights. June 9, 1949. Plebiscite Proposal there has been no recognition by the Allies that Taiwan has been incorporated into Chinese territory. October 23, 1949, Right of Conquest. Chinese President Li Zongren is in favor of joint Sino-American Commission to govern Taiwan, but admits U.S. could take control based on right of conquest. December 3, 1949, Special Responsibility of U.S. The United States has a special responsibility for Taiwan due to its military liberation of the island. October 23, 1950, International Problem By sending the 7th Fleet into the Taiwan Strait, the U.S. Executive Branch has forcefully emphasized its position that Formosa is an international problem. November 11, 1950, No Formal Act to date, no formal act restoring Formosa and the Pescadores to China has occurred. November 16, 1950, Principal Victor over Japan. As Principal Victor over Japan, the U.S. has a great responsibility in regard to the disposition of Formosa. May 3, 1951, Occupation of Formosa. There are many types of military occupation, and the U.S. could occupy Formosa without any Americans being present. June 2, 1952, Undetermined Sovereignty Sovereignty over Formosa is still undetermined, with the coming into force of the San Francisco Peace Treaty on April 28, 1952. September 27, 1954, Inchoate Juridical Status Formosa and the Pescadores, also known as Taiwan, have an inchoate juridical status under SFPT, However, Jinmen and Masu have continuously been Chinese territory. October 14, 1954, U.S. Juridical Position Neither the San Francisco Peace Treaty of April 28, 1952, nor the Sino-Japanese Peace Treaty of August 5, 1952, can be interpreted to say that Formosa and the Pescadores have been ceded to China. Importantly, the United States retains a juridical position in these islands. October 18, 1954. Distinctive juridical status. Eisenhower said, Technically, Formosa and the Pescadores are not under Chinese sovereignty. The Chinese nationalists are living in a privileged sanctuary. October 28, 1954. Unsatisfied U.S. interest. Japan did not cede sovereignty over Formosa and the Pescadores to China. Japan renounced its own sovereignty, but left the future title undefined. As principal victor over Japan, the United States has an unsatisfied interest in these former Japanese islands. July 1, 1955, United States could assert legal claim. In the peace treaty, Japan has merely renounced sovereignty over Taiwan, but there has been no other disposition. The United States also has an interest in Taiwan and could assert a legal claim to the islands. Hence, the disposition of Taiwan is not merely an internal Chinese problem. June 10, 1956, Former Japanese Territories The United States has residual responsibility over all former Japanese territories.